Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Fridays with Fiscal. Today, we're going to be going over the uh, STRS advanced balancing. Uh, first thing I want to go over is um, we're just going to kind of briefly touch over the STRS advanced program. Again, kind of a review before we actually go to the actual balancing issue. Um, so just to keep in mind, the STRS advanced program provides uh, the district with the ability to create re different reports. So you got your advanced report, your not advanced report, and then the annual re report that they can actually look at, view, uh, make corrections, et cetera. Um, they're used basically just for verification of all you know employees that are advancing, not advancing, et cetera. And they to keep uh, to keep the districts informed, they can run those reports as often as they need to until you know they process the advance. But they could actually keep running the reports. Maybe they need to make corrections. They can make the corrections, rerun the reports. They can just keep doing that until everything is accurate. Um, again, there's three reports. We have the advanced fiscal year to date report, which is going to include everyone that was paid uh, that paid into SCRS over the fiscal year. Um, and then we have the advanced positions report. And that's going to list all advanced jobs for the district. Anyone who has an advanced position that will getting, be getting paid over the summer months, and has accrued wages, um, they will be on that report. And then that, the third report is the non-advanced position report. And that's going to include anyone that has a job that will not be advancing over the summer. Keep in mind the only field that is non-modifiable during SCRS advance. So when the district is actually in advance, the SCRS advance flag that is on the compensation record is not modifiable. All other fields are modifiable during the advance period. Go in here. When the district generates the SCRS advance submission file, that's actually going to flag the appropriate compensation. So whichever compensations are going to be advanced, they will be flagged as advanced on that record. But that is, like I said, again, when the submission file is created, um, that compensation record is going to remain in the advanced mode until the last payment in the contract has been paid. So over the summer months, so that last payment is made and the ticket, then they will be taken out of advance off of the compensation record. Um, that flag will get turned off when that last payment is made, and then they'll be they'll no longer be considered in advance. Um, when they run the submission uh, report, it also sets those SCRS advanced configurations on the system configuration SCRS advance option. Those all get set. So basically, it puts them in advance mode. And it also puts the advance dollar amount on there as well. Um, when the district, if the district tries to begin processing a July payroll before they actually process the advance, they will get an error telling them that they cannot initialize because uh, July, uh, the advance has not been processed yet. And if you have districts, which there probably aren't very many, but if you would have one that does not process advance, maybe they don't, maybe they uh, they pay based on earnings. If that's the case, they, they still need to run the advance report, even though no one's going to get advanced and create the submission file in order for them to uh, basically be able to move on with their July payroll. <clears throat> so when they create that SCRS advanced submission file, the uh, file called SCRS AD, and then with the year, so this year it'd be 2206.txt gets created. And then that's the file that the district is going to actually submit to STRS. And then one thing to keep in mind, if you didn't uh, attend our fiscal year end meeting, make sure if a district has third-party data that needs to be included, sent to STRS um, from, from, con from a contractor, that the district needs to make sure they get the data from that contractor so that data can be merged with the SRS um, file that gets advanced file that gets created for the district. 
Um, another thing to keep in mind, and we've been seeing this a lot since people are starting getting ready for the advance or you know, process their last June pay and they're running the advance. Um, in order for an employee to advance, the work days must equal the day's work. The amount remaining to be paid has to be greater than zero. And the pays uh, paid have to be the pays have to be greater than the, the pays paid. Pays have to be greater than the pays paid. So those are the three criteria that really need to be followed um, to make sure that you know that's one thing that the district can look at at first to see, hey, you know, do the work days and days work match? Another thing that they may see is maybe they've been paid. Um, up till you know the last pay of June, but their earnings do not match their contract amount. If that's the case, their accrued uh, amounts are not accurate. So you have to basically check that as well. And if that's the case, adjustments may have to be made to the uh, the amount earned in order to get the accrued figure correct. And those would be just be made right on the compensation record. <clears throat> Just remind your districts and reminders to you that the annual submission file is going to be due to STRS. It's always due by the first Friday in August. And so this year, that would be August 5th. And then also remind your districts that um, the annual report, once they submit it to STRS, it can be found under the employer report section in the employer self-service area uh, for STRS. Um, that, that is going to show all different things like payroll files, service credit reports, annual reports, et cetera. That's where they can see all of that information on that employer self-service section. All right. Now we're going to actually go over, what we're going to talk about are all of these fields. I'm gonna break everything down, tell you what exactly each field is on the advance report. So let me go ahead and pull up my next thing here that I have to look at, because obviously I can't remember all of this by heart. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and start here. So the non-taxed earnings, which you'll see, these are all at the bottom of that SRS advance report. The non-taxed earnings are a total of the SRS applicable gross for the fiscal year. Um, it does include the amount remaining on the contract. So like yeah, the amount that's still owed on the contract. So it would be like the compensation obligation minus amount paid minus amount docked. Um, Non-tax earnings is a total for employees who have SCRS annuity or employer SCRS withheld. So that's what, the, that's what those uh, non-tax earnings consist of. The non-tax advanced amount are the contributions that are going to be paid over the summer months for the employees who have an SCRS annuity or have employer uh, SCRS pickup withheld. So this is going to be your advance amount for the, the current fiscal year 22. These tax earnings, if a district withholds employee contributions using of the 450, which is the non-tax um, deduction, um, this is this will actually be populated with those figures. That's going to be the total um, SCR applicable gross for the fiscal year. Um, it does include the amount remaining on the contract. So basically, the contract obligation minus the amount paid minus the amount docked. And then the tax earnings is the total for the employees who have an employee amount withheld on the SCRS 450 or non annuitized deduction record. The taxed amount advance, that also would be from the 450 or that non-annuitized STRS record. What that is, is contributions that will be paid over the summer months for employees who have the amount withheld as a non-annuitized or the STRS 450 record. The, that, that figure will show here in this tax amount, advanced amount field. And like I said, not a lot of districts that I know of actually have um, withholding set up like that. There may be a handful here and there, but most of them are uh, the employer employees portions are non-tax. This next field, the tax plus non-tax, 
is the non-tax total. So basically on this report, it'll be like the 15,231 plus um, the non-tax deposit pickup amount, which is that 537,631.53. Those figures added together equal that tax plus non-tax total. The, uh, the tax advance amount, or excuse me, it, the amount advance, I'm going back up to the wrong field here. The amount advance will be the amount that would be paid toward the advance over the summer months. So you can see here that $15,230.31 is going to be this district's advance amount. The regular employee count is a count of the, all the employees on the report who are not rehired retirees. A mid-year uh, rehired retiree will count as both a regular employee and a rehired employee. So keep in mind that this figure will, anybody that has a mid-year uh, re rehired retiree, they're going to be included in this count as well as this count, the rehired retiree count. The regular contributions are totals, uh, total employee amounts that were withheld from the STRS annuity item, which is that 450 um, non-annuitized non -annuitized record. This does not include rehired, re rehired retiree am amounts. And the amount also includes total tax advance amounts. <clears throat> the regular pickup is the total employee amount withheld from the 591 record plus the total amount withheld from the 691 employer pickup record. But it, and it does not include rehire retiree amounts. Um, the total also includes total non-tax advanced amounts. So just keep that in mind. There's a total errors and warnings that that's Actually, if there's warnings and errors on the report um, and when you're processing it, you'll actually see a number here saying, hey, there's two warnings and there's one error, which is fatal. So you may want, you're going to definitely have to correct that. But you want to look at all of that. And if corrections are needed, make those corrections. The non-tax deposit pickup amount is the amount contributed to date for fiscal year 22. It is the total employee amount withheld on STRS annuity items, plus your total amount withheld um, from your employer STRS items or your 691 item, you pick up item. So that's a total of the employee 591 and the employer 691 contribu contributions. <clears throat> the non-tax total, <clears throat> excuse me, is the total of the fiscal year 22 contributions to date plus the advanced contributions for the current fiscal year. Um, the non-tax total is a total of non-tax deposit pickup plus the non-tax advance amount. So that's your non-tax total. It will be your non-tax deposit pickup plus the advance amount. The tax deposit pickup is the amount contributed to date for fiscal year 22. The tax deposit pickup is the total employee amount withheld on the non-annuitized STRS item, so the 450 record. Tax total is the total of fiscal year contribu 22 contributions to date, plus your advanced contributions for the current fiscal year. <clears throat> so that tax total is the total of tax deposit pickup plus your tax advance amounts, which all of that would be coming from your 450 record. So again, <clears throat> most districts probably are gonna have nothing here if they uh, have their contributions for a place set up as a 591. The retiree amount advance, excuse me, <clears throat> let me get a drink here. There we go. <clears throat> all right, the retiree ad amount advance is the total advance amount for employees who are rehired retirees. So that dollar amount is going to appear in that field. 
the rehired retiree count is a count of employees on the report who are considered or marked as rehired retirees. And then just keep in mind, like I said earlier, that count, if it's a mid-year rehired retiree, that count is going to include them as well as that regular employee count. So they're gonna be actually be counted twice. The retiree contributions um, is the total employee amount withheld on the SRS items. So the 459 annuity for rehired retirees. Um, the amount also includes tax advance amounts for the rehired retirees. So again, because it's using that 450 record, more than likely it's gonna probably be zero. Not necessarily, but it could be. And then your retiree pickup field is a total employee amount withheld from the um, SRS 591, which is your employee contribution annuity record, plus a total amount withheld from the 691 employer SRS pickup record for rehired retirees. That total includes non-tax advance amounts for rehired retirees as well. <clears throat> So does anyone have any questions on all of these fields? And then I'm actually going to put the document I'm reading off of or looking at, I'm gonna put that out in our documentation. So we have something out there kind of explaining what these fields or where these fields are coming from. Um, it may help the districts a little bit more to understand where those fields are coming from when they process the report. <clears throat> Whoops, somebody wants in here. Let me let them in. Uh, we do have some chats. Hold on here. Uh, Josh Yaki, we are seeing the SRS Advance Report sample. Should we be seeing something else? No. Right now, all I have up there is that sample report, and that's all I wanted you to see. Um, like I said, that document I'm using, I will actually be putting that out there so you have um, access to that as well. And then someone then she said disregard. Sorry, I didn't go didn't scroll down far enough to see that. Um, so if we need to double check earnings, where would we go look? Um, actually, we'll talk about that in a second. I think that's the only other question that we had. All right. So um, if you wanted to actually check the earnings, you probably could run an, well, I can't say earnings register because that could contain um, non-SRS withheld, withheld items. Um, what you could do is you could probably run a report from the 450 record, uh, pulling in all of the SB, um, SB gross, from the 450 record, that should give you the earnings for the fiscal year. Uh, I take that back. It won't because that's going to include, the 450 includes figures from last fiscal year as well. Well, I'm just trying to think to myself what else you can use. I'm gonna have to come back to that one, but um, yeah, I will go back to that one in a minute, but. There's gotta be something we can use to get those figures. We may have to use archive, some archive reports to get that total, but I'll double check on that to make sure. <clears throat> oh, um, they are asking if they're double checking uh, earnings, where do we go? Uh, you could look, use the total gross field that's where we actually like, if we have to make adjustments for the SRS advance report, we're normally making the adjustments to that total gross field on the 450 record. So that's where you're going to be looking. But like I said, it, it's a little difficult because right now those figures include what was paid over last summer as well or you know, the earnings from last summer. And that's something we're going to talk about, about a little bit with our developers. We gotta make, some, make it something a little bit easier than that because I know myself, I've struggled, you know, looking at that. It's like, okay, that figure is too high. 
Well, it's because it included those amounts from last summer. But the thing is, when you run the advanced report, it should only be pulling anything that was paid from like the first pay that they were out of advance till June 30th. Those totals will be right. But I mean, sometimes it's it's not, it's pulling in incorrect amounts. So we're, we're going to talk about that next Thursday at our sprint meeting to see if there's a way we can make it a little bit easier. Because my, my thinking was, this is my thinking, make the gross amount be the figure that would contain everything from last summer and the current fiscal year. Make the applicable, applicable gross be the amount that is actually what was paid from when they were out of advance till June 30th. That way you've got two different figures and you can use the, you know, use the, the applicable, applicable gross then if you need to make a correction to the advance report. And it'll also give you a figure, the figure, the correct figure for the current fiscal year from when they were out of advance till June 30th. Um, hold on, we also need to run a room. We have another chat. It would be awesome to run a report out of payments in the dashboard. Okay, that is that was that's a good question or a good suggestion, and we may uh, be able to add that to our uh, next sprint meeting to, to ask that out of payments in the dashboard. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That would be really nice because I know a lot of times when I'm doing calculations. I mean, I usually you know go out and I look at the payments from you know, the first day they were out of advance to the end of June. And um, I look at those payments. I go in individually a lot of times because I want to make sure that, you know, they, those, the grows actually had um, STRS contributions withheld because once in a while they have like a severance or something like that. Obviously no, no um, STRS is withheld. So those uh, gross wages are not included. So I will definitely, definitely suggest that. We gotta find something to make it a little bit easier to get those earnings figured out instead of uh, having to go in my hand and go through payments. And that suggestion, I could even go one more and say, it would be really nice to be able to get a report out of payments that only pulled in SRS country or SRS gross figures that were actually had contributions withheld on, but. Yeah, I, that's probably a, a dream there, but um, definitely because I I do agree it is a little difficult to try to find earnings right now. Um, you could, like I said, you could run an earnings register, but that isn't very helpful because you almost still have to look at each payment to make sure that um, the payment screen, you have to make sure that there was no um, earnings on there that weren't um, taxable by STRS. So I will definitely add that to our meeting. All right, let's go back over here. And then now I'm gonna kind of go over um, just a little bit of a few options you can use like when the district is balancing their advance report and like different things that they can do. So, Basically, these tax plus non-tax deposit pickup amounts, so this 55-283184, minus the advance amount, which is that 15,231, is the amount that is uh, going to be paid, which is the amount that's gonna be paid over the summer, will equal this um, current non-tax deposit pickup amount. You'll see this amount minus this amount equals this amount. That's normally the case. If a district wants to find advanced amounts that were paid over the over last summer, you can actually go out and let me just show you here. Where is my here we go? You can go under reports to the um, SRS uh, reporting. Sorry, I had to restart my session. Time now. Here we go. So go to reports under the SRS reporting, go to this check SRS advance report, and then the district should be able to run this report. So probably they, their advance started on 
And then they would have to make sure that they know what the ending date was. So maybe it ended 9-1. So the advance was finished by 9-1. So they ran it from 7-1 through 9-1. They could generate that report. And then that report will actually show you, let me see if I can do this here. I don't know if this test district was in advance at one time. We'll, we'll find out here. I'll just generate this because the report should actually give them a total that was paid over the summer months last summer. Let's see if it has anything on it. It does, okay. So at the bottom of the report, you'll see this was the total dollar amount that they that was paid last summer over, over the summer months for their advance. Or another thing that a district could do if they would rather is they could go out to the archive reports and the payroll item detail reports from the summer. So like probably any reports from July 1st, the payroll item detail report, it will actually list on that report and I'll pull this up and show you. What am I doing here? Um, this, this actually is what it looks like on the bottom of the payroll item detail report, but you'll see when a district is in advance, there'll be an SRS advancement field on that payroll item detail report, and it will tell the dollar amount that was paid for an advance. So if the district wanted to, they could go out to the archives and get those payroll item detail um, SRS advancement figures from each pay over the summer month, add those together, that would give them what was paid over the summer as well. Um, and then to get total payables paid for the whole fiscal year, including the you know, summer months, the district could go out to the payee, the payments payee, and then the payee payment checks or payee electronic payments. So let me just go back here. So we could go to payments, go to payee. And depending on whether the district processes a, a check for SCRS or if they do it electronically, you could go in and then they could filter. Pull my thing up here. Um, they could filter, you know, for STRS. And then they'll want to make sure that they have the amount listed on the grid. Because what they can do then is they can uh, filter it to process, you know, anything that was uh, the transaction date is 7121 and then dot dot through 630 of 22. That will give them every every payment that was made to STRS over the entire fiscal year. Then they can actually run a report. I would do it in CSV format. Then that way they can get a, a total the dollar amount that was with or paid to STRS. And then they can also go in to get employer distributions at the employer amount. They could go into the reports again, but then they would go to the um, employer distribution or employer retirement share, depending on what they how they process. I think either way, they could still use employer distributions. And then they would put in their start date of 7121 and their end date of 63022. And then they could just choose that 691. Let me just try this here. And then we'll go down here and just pull in the 691. We're going to generate that report. And then that report should give us a total dollar amount of employer uh, contributions that were made to STRS from July 1st clear through the end of June. And here's my total. So then you could take that non-tax deposit pickup. So let me pull that uh, back up here. You could take that non-tax deposit pickup amount, which is the 53763153, plus that check SCRS advance report amount, like the advance amount that was paid over the summer, plus employer, employer, can't say it, employer contributions, 
that's going to total what you just came up with from all those reports. That should total the dollar amount for the fiscal year. That was the dollar amount that was paid from July 1 through June 30. That's everything that was paid at that point. Like I said, that total should match what you pulled up from the, the payments grid, as well as your employer distribution. Or, or you could take um, the 7-121 date to the 6-30-22 total pay, totals from the payee, pay, the payee report that we processed from the grid plus the employer distributions, which are the 691 that we process from the, from the employer distribution report, and then subtract your check advance STRS totals. So whatever you, your totals that you got from that check STRS advance report, that should basically total that non-tax deposit pickup amount. So there's a couple different ways that they can balance you know, what was paid over the summer month plus as well as the fiscal year, a couple of different ways of doing that. So I have both, a couple of those, both, both of those options available on this document. And again, like I said, I am going to take that document. I'll put it out in our um, documentation, probably under the appendix somewhere, but then I may also put it out there on our training, um, trainings and meetings grid. I think we have a, uh, a link where you can put supporting documents. So I may put it out that out there as well. So you have it to, to, to refer to if you need to. Um, are there any other suggestions or any other questions you have regarding the advanced balancing and the SRS advance itself? You guys are so quiet on Friday. <laughs> That's a good thing, though. You're ready for the weekend. All right. Um, if no one has any other questions, I believe that is everything that I have. And like I said, if you have any questions, you can always, you know, send us a, a ticket or whatever. Just let us know what your questions are. Or if you have suggestions, like we had that suggestion about running a report out of the dashboard for payments. Definitely, I, I, I really think that would be a great idea. So um, I will definitely bring that up on Thursday at our meeting and you know see if there's another way, because it would be nice if we could actually run something that we could actually get like total non-tax earnings. I mean, other than from this report, uh, again, the payments option, that we suggest off the dashboard is great for an individual employee, which a lot of people are running into that right now. They're trying to figure out earnings. So that makes it a little difficult. So again, how I've been doing it is just going into uh, the dashboard, pulling up the employee, going to payments, and then filtering it. Um, I usually filter it for the entire fiscal year, 7-1 through 6-30, and then um, I find out like when the advance has, you know, was finished over the summer last summer. And then I actually filter it again because I just want to get pretty much the totals for this current fiscal year. We don't want to don't want totals from last fiscal year. So that's kind of how I've been doing it. But that is one way that you can get earnings for an individual employee. Um, if no one has any other questions, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and have a Wonderful weekend, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you.